Of all the current racing games available, or still receiving updates, GT Sport is one I keep going back to. Don't get me wrong, I adore the vehicle handling in Assetto Corsa Competizione and the dry stone wall physics in Forza Horizon 4. I'm also several seasons deep into my team career in F1 2021, and I've even become a MotoGP 21 World Champion. But here I am, still trying to get to level 50 in a Gran Turismo spin-off. There are many reasons for this. One is the ranked online sport mode. Another is the diverse set of cars included that showcases automobile history. Or it could be the ability to play in 4K and at solid frame rates on a lowly PS4 Pro. But one of the main attractions is the track list. The circuits in GT Sport, a mixture of real world and fictional, have a depth to them that's rarely available elsewhere. There's a hint of some Sega AM2-esque magic to some of the designs, while in other areas they are super authentic. Quality of quantity is the order of the day. So, here are my top 10 tracks in GT Sport. It's worth bearing in mind that this is all within the context of GT Sport, based upon factors such as accuracy, weather and time of day options, and if they're fun to drive within this specific game. You may disagree, but that's okay. Simply let us know on social media or in the comments below your favourite Gran Turismo venues. This venue was formerly the Osterreich Ring, which is in PC Simulator Automobilista 2, then shortened and turned into the A1 Ring. I remember watching Formula 1 in the early 2000s around this venue and thinking that it was one of the most boring circuits on the calendar. Maybe then it's thanks to the god-awfulness of the majority of modern F1 circuits that when the Austrian energy drink giant rejuvenated it in 2011, that now all of a sudden it's considered one of the greats. Nope, turns out I was just wrong. It's simply satisfying to drive. GT Sport does a superb job at replicating the harsh curbs that you can still use to your advantage, the tree-lined surroundings, and it's also one of the few venues in the game that you can drive in the rain too. The short layout is also included, which works surprisingly well in a shifter cart. The Red Bull Ring was included via a free update in August 2018, and it's this specific recreation of the track that makes me realise just how far the track creation in the F1 games needs to improve. You don't just need to model the curbing correctly, but the undulations on the main strip of asphalt too. A friend of mine, James, says the Virage d'Arnage on the Circuit de la Sarthe, the famed venue in the city of Le Mans, France, is the worst corner in all of motorsport. A bold claim, but it's hard to disagree. It comes after a short straight where judging the right braking point is very difficult unless you have the stopping power of a shotgun, then onto a 90 degree right turn that comes after the fast and flowing Kirby de Golf. Thankfully, the rest of the circuit is so joyous that I can overlook the worst corner ever to be conceived. Even with the chicanes added to the Mulsanne Strait in 1990, the 24 hours of Le Mans venue is still one of motorsport's crown jewels. What starts out as a relatively simple straight line test turns into a high speed white knuckle ride around the daunting Porsche curves, scenes of many sleep deprived accidents. This venue is also an example of Polyphony Digital's extraordinarily anal levels of recreation. Pick a time early in the day, like time trial at dawn, and the grandstands are almost empty. But select a race in the afternoon, and they are packed to the rafters. One of the first circuits you'll experience in GT Sport, and one there from launch in 2017. In fact, it predates the game launch as it was originally playable in the GT Sport closed beta earlier that year. Running its traditional clockwise variation, the first corner is a flat out kink into a tight left turn, which you can set up a nice overtake through. But the next corner turns right, so if you run wide during your passing manoeuvre, your opponent can get a switch back and repass. The venue is wide with some quick switchbacks in the middle sector where you must plan your line in advance, reminiscent of the first sector of Suzuka. Ish. You then fall downhill into a long braking zone from dizzying speeds into a tight right corner, perfect for last minute dives down the inside. The combination of fast, gutsy corners, elevation changes, usable curbs and several overtaking opportunities have made Dragon Trail Seaside an online lobby favourite. What happens next is the only downside to this location. There's a tight, sometimes flat but not quite in harder worn rubber chicane. You will hit the wall head on and cause a pile up sooner rather than later. It's like the entire field is racing down a funnel and this is the narrowest part at the bottom. A recipe for disaster. It's Suzuka, and a damn good model of it. A figure of 8 layout, little runoff and 130R. Arguably the most iconic course in Japan, the Honda-owned venue is close ties with the Gran Turismo series, first appearing in 2004. You have the choice of the full circuit or the shorter east course that simply includes the first sector. Here you will see a perfectly crafted ferris wheel, pit garages and famous crossover bridge. The lap begins with the often frustrating series of medium speed corners. It's hard to find a rhythm but once you do, a zen-like flow will entrap your car. The Degner curves are as unforgiving as ever and the hairpin entices everyone online to try and do a Kobayashi. Unlike Spa, more on that later, Suzuka isn't in every single racing game, so savour one of the best recreations of it in GT Sport. The World Rally Championship once held a round in the Alsace region of France, close to the German border, and the roads used were instantly forgettable. Flat, devoid of any character. 
Thankfully, the GT Sport track based in the same area isn't realistic at all. There are big elevation changes, a giant banked corner and lush surroundings. Sometimes you're reminded that Polyphony Digital was responsible for such great tracks as Trial Mountain and Deep Forest Raceway. This is one of those moments. There are multiple occasions where you must work out the right braking point for a corner as you appear over a blind crest. Trail braking is a necessary skill for a quick lap, as you will need to brake and turn on at least two occasions around the lap. Away from the asphalt, the surrounding greenery and blue skies provide a unique setting. Sure, this isn't a realistic venue, but sometimes that's fun. Its beguiling nature will get under your skin, even if that means several hours of hitting the barrier first. I know what you're thinking. You're about to ask if this is a hill climb. The answer is no. That's the sliver of asphalt outside Goodwood House that is home to the Goodwood Festival of Speed, and was in Gran Turismo 6. This is the Goodwood Motor Circuit, which is down the road and was built around an old RAF airfield in 1948. These days, the track is only used for historic racing such as the Goodwood Revival and Members Meeting, but back in its heyday, this was used for all sorts of serious racing. The Glover Trophy non-championship Formula 1 race was at this venue, alongside 9-hour sports car endurance races and the Tourist Trophy. That was until it was deemed to be too dangerous for high-profile racing. I can see why. The speeds are monumental, and unlike most airfield-based circuits, there are some elevation changes that, albeit mild, change the weight transfer of your car, or make the next braking zone unseen. In the final chicane, there's a nasty little bump that causes all sorts of arm wrestling for the uninitiated, and I swear that no one ever has successfully managed to negotiate turn one without running wide. Where on earth is the apex? Speaking of just being slightly offline, make one small error of judgement here and you will end up in a field of crops, as opposed to the luxury convenience of a modern day bitumen based runoff. A real pig, but when you get a lap right, preferably in a classic Mini or Renault Gordini, the satisfaction is off the happiness charts. Plus, look at the chequered flag waver, period dress marshals, planes and retro inspired pit lane. The attention to detail is finer than a diamond encrusted Rolex. It feels like nothing else in contemporary video games. I can smell the cigar smoke from here. I can hear you crying right now. Spa? This far down the list? But I bet you've lost count of how many laps you've done around the Ardennes mountain region by now. Undoubtedly one of the all-time greatest venues, but I'm just a bit bored of it, okay? Any complaints on a postcard labelled John Monroe, Traction, Scotland, please? The representation of the fabled Belgian classic is millimetre perfect, with a detailed pit lane, acres of trees, and bollards. Lots of floppy bollards. As the venue is known for unpredictable weather conditions, it's one of the few tracks available with optional moisture. The game initially launched without this track, but thanks to the free version 1.47 update in October 2019, the current Gran Turismo title was finally bestowed with Stavlo's best track. The same update also added a diesel Mazda Demio. Trust me when I say the two of those don't work in harmony. Do not call it Bathurst. That's a mistake. I'm a pedant, so while it may be known as Bathurst, the track is called Mount Panorama Circuit, which is in Bathurst. Forget being precise with Spa's corner names, can we get a t-shirt made with, I think you'll find it's called Mount Panorama. Like Circuit de la Sarthe, the venue is used as a public road with a 60km per hour or 37mph speed limit. This means when racing isn't happening, you can drive down the venue for what I think is the single greatest motor race on earth. No, not the Isle of Man TT, 24 Hour of Le Mans, or even Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, but the Bathurst 1000. I struggle to make a single lap of the circuit without brushing the wall, so I have no idea how supercar drivers do a thousand kilometres in V8 powered touring cars. If you could place the Macau or Monaco street circuits on top of a mountain, with narrow confines and Mount Everest-like inclines, you would end up with something like Mount Panorama. In GT Sport, you have the option of racing it in the dark too if the venue wasn't scary enough already. A lap here is bookended by two long straights, but even they aren't straightforward. Mountain Straight has a giant dip halfway down, while Conrod Straight also undulates, culminating in the fastest corner in Australia, the chase. Let me put it to you this way. Turn 18 is called Forrest's Elbow, so called because someone called Jack Forrest fell from his bike and scraped away his elbow. It doesn't get more Australian than that. I remember a time when having the Nordschleife in a video game was a novelty. Project Gotham Racing 2, in my mind, was the first to capture the essence of the venue, but the first time I got to properly experience the Green Hell was Gran Turismo 4. At last, here was a version that felt right. GT Sport continues this fine tradition, with one of the most accurate recreations in all of gaming and Sims. The one in Assetto Corsa runs it very close, but I think the track representation in GT Sport just edges it thanks to the breathtaking sunsets and detailed surroundings. Gran Turismo games are full of tiny little details that aren't necessary but add up to a greater sense of occasion, such as the Nürburgring Castle illuminated at night. Each speck of this hallowed turf is highly accurate with bumps, dips, camber changes and graffiti to match. Flansgarten is a heart in the mouth moment and the uphill blast through Keschelschen is a series of challenging corners, not a straight as it should be. You've played it in countless racing titles, but if you've not tried it in this game in Mist of Dawn or Dark of Night, then you've not properly experienced it. 
Repeat after me. Autodrome a Lago Maggiore. In the most flamboyant false Italian accent you can possibly attempt. Thanks to a friend of mine saying it in this way, he's also Scottish by the way, so imagine some sort of weird Scottish-Italian hybrid accent better than the one you've just heard, the name of this track is firmly implanted at the forefront of my mind. Just like the country itself, this circuit is filled with pizzazz. There's a deceptively tight first corner where the braking zone always seems to sneak up on you. Turn 3 is quick, but is immediately followed by a slower right-hander, so you either need to compromise the corner before or take an unorthodox tight line into it. The track then gradually gets quicker, like a ball of string unravelling. There's a flowing sequence of high-speed corners in the middle of the lap that is perfectly judged to be just flat should you be in the right car on fresh tyres. This leads on to the quickest part of the circuit, the back straight. Straight it may be, but flat it almost certainly isn't. There's a giant dip down analogous to going down the Big Dipper at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, and then you're into an uphill braking zone for a giant sweeping right-hander with massive positive camber and a larger flat inside curb on the inside. Like playing golf, you can never get the perfect performance through this corner. Try as you might, each time you can go a little bit quicker than you anticipate, right up until you drop two wheels into the bunker and it sucks you in. A great place for overtaking, the steepness here also creates a real wow moment in VR. The lap is completed by a seemingly innocuous final corner with plenty of asphalt runoff that tips downhill. Brake, down one gear and then power through. It's another corner, however, that takes time to build up to. You can carry serious speed through it, which really helps lap time, but you can go through it hundreds of times before you unlock the secret recipe. The flowing lines, ebbs and flows, and breathtaking mountainous scenery that stretches way beyond turn 5 are the truffle pesto atop a fresh bowl of bucatini. And now, one that isn't great. Fisherman's Ranch who, in their right mind, thought that a four mile stretch of winding, repetitive dirt track filled with unforgiving solid barriers was a good idea in a game where gravel isn't the core competence? No thanks, this one never gets picked when a lobby track vote happens. Never. Imagine the video game equivalent of indigestion, and you're pretty much there. That's it for our list of best GT Sport tracks, but remember, this is just one person's opinion. Honourable shoutouts go to Tsukuba, Monza and Interlagos too. Please let us know in the comments below your favourite tracks in Gran Turismo history, and we'll be back with more GT videos very soon. Until then, keep it pinned.